Joining me now here on the MMA Report, a man that we got a chance to talk to a little while ago, and he's in preparations for the opening round of the PFL Light Heavyweight Tournament. It is the boogeyman, Rakeem Cleveland. Rakeem, man, appreciate the time. You know, as I was, when I knew we, we set this interview up, and I was thinking about your fight here, and what was kind of interesting to me is the preparations for this fight, because it, it, you're not just preparing for an opening matchup against Vinny Magulace, you also have to be preparing for a potential second fight later on that night in the semifinals of this tournament. Um, so have you changed your preparations for this fight in in kind of uh, preparing your body for what you're going to expect to get out of your body on October 13th? Um, absolutely not, man. Um, with, with Vinny being the first match, uh, I've been solely concentrating on him. Um, the other two guys, you know, they're good strikers, not necessarily as, as, as dangerous as Vinny is in the other realm um, of, of the fighting as far as grappling. So I've been focusing on, on you know, my grappling and, and being more, more active for this fight. Obviously, Vinny's grappling is unbelievable. I mean, anyone anyone who follows him may knows about Vinny's uh, grappling game. Um, you know, so I, I know I was also another interview you did. You, you talked about some of the guys you're working down at ATT uh, with the grappling. But is it also one of those things of yes, you you've got to you know put additional preparations to the grappling, but also you can't forget about the other aspects of the game. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, he he's he's a great grappler, uh, one of the best in the world, but. He also, you know, he's a decent striker, too. So you, you have to focus on both. But, you know, with me being a striker, naturally, um, I'm definitely focusing on, on my, my ground game and, you know, trying to keep things on the feet. I mean, do you feel like people undervalue his striking game? I do. Um, I think uh, his last opponent did, too, you know, and, and that was a mistake. So you can't really ever underestimate somebody especially somebody of our size you know because even if it's not the cleanest technique you know it always takes only one good shot to get you wobbled or hurt or even out of the fight so um you always got to focus on every aspect of the game you know even per se you know they say he's a grappler you know he's a mixed martial artist so at the end of the day you know the fight starts on the feet so he has to have some kind of discipline in striking so uh, I'm definitely aware of, of, of what he does on his feet, but um, definitely uh, I'd rather be on the feet with him than on the ground. How much of, of your preparation um, you know, for this matchup is also going back and looking at your two fights inside the PFL cage and, and, and breaking yourself down and, and, and seeing what you did right, what you did wrong, and, and maybe trying to pick up on what things Vinny and his team are looking at? Uh, a lot of it. Um, you know, I, I watch my, my past fights, you know, not even these just these last two, but the ones before that. And uh, I look at the openings that I leave and I, and I try to correct those. Um, that's a big part of, of fighting is correcting yourself first because, you know, you can work on, you know, stopping someone else. But if you're not fixing the holes in your game, then it's really it doesn't really matter. So we've definitely been looking at that, breaking stuff down and, and trying to correct a lot of it. Is that ultimately the stuff that keeps you up at night? It's not about what your opponent does. It's more about, um, you know, the things that you just haven't done right in the cage. Is that the stuff that, like, you're just laying in bed and, and you just, you're constantly thinking about of just those those little minor mistakes? Yeah, it's, it's definitely something I'm aware of. You know, just like my last fight, you know, I made a minor mistake that ultimately, you know, gave up my back. And, you know, we, we all know how to fight in it. Um, so... It's small things like that, small steps, you know, instead of turning right, I should have turned left into him and, you know, stuff like that, that you have to focus on. And, and it, sometimes it's against the natural movement that you're used to doing. So it, it takes a little bit more attention. You know, obviously you weren't unable to get a, a victory in your last fight, which you were just mentioning there. Is, is it short term memory with that fight where you, you uh, you just have to move on past it, or is it one of those things that it, it constantly lives with you because ultimately that's what's going to make you a better fighter? Um, you know, a little bit of both. Um, you have to think about and, and rewatch what you did wrong, and you have to focus on on the things you did wrong, but you also have to look at the things you did right, and um, you know, vice versa. You know, different scenarios of it, but um, in this format, you know, with things happening so quickly, you can't really dwell on it too long because. You know, like 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 you see, it's already up to the next fight, and it's time to get ready for you know the tournament and the playoffs. 
I mean, is the last couple of months more about been about, you know, training smart, making sure you're, you're taking care of your body? I, I know you've talked about it in other interviews. The last time we talked, we talked about your use of CBD. I mean, is that really the the, best, the biggest part of, of this format is just making sure you're taking care of your body? Yeah, especially now um, with, uh, with the chances of fighting twice in one night. Um, if you go into your first fight already feeling banged up or, or with small injuries and you know, you win your first fight, but you injure yourself more, you're hampering yourself for the next match. So um, taking care of your body and, and being as healthy as you can is, is a big part of especially a tournament style fighting. I, I know you, you trained there with King Mo down, down at ATT. Did, did you talk to him about how when he had the one night tournament in Bellator and, and what he's done over Japan about kind of uh, the in-between fights? I mean, obviously in Bellator, an injury you know, took him out of that tournament. But did you talk to him about his mindset of, of how he just kind of makes sure your, your body, you know, after that first fight doesn't kind of tense up? Yeah, definitely. Um, we talk about things. Uh, we work on, we're, work on, we're working on some things. And um, just really, you know, going back in the back and recovering is, is, is going to be a big factor. Uh, but also staying loose and not letting yourself tighten up and, and letting yourself uh, feel that pain that, that sets in after you settle down and all the adrenaline wears off. So, um, which is always going to be some, especially if you take some shots or, you know, getting some crazy grappling exchanges. You're going to feel a little bit of muscle fatigue, but um, we're working on getting through those stages and staying fresh for the next one. As we're talking, we're we're less than a month out um, from this fight. I mean, what is the next couple of weeks like for you? Is it is it? Are you at that stage where you're kind of you know starting just kind of it's it's tapering down training a little bit and it's more just you know working on the finer details? Definitely, um, I'm still doing a little bit of a little bit a little bit of hard stuff, um, but we're definitely focusing on the minor details, um, keeping healthy. Um, building up the cardio as, as much as I can because that's going to be a key factor and just uh, sharpening the tools. How would you say you're, you're a different fighter heading into this fight as opposed to uh, your last fight? Um, I think you'll definitely see more aggressive, uh, more, more forward pace. Um, you know, my last fight, I was kind of on the back foot a lot, uh, kind of letting him um, dictate the pace, and I was kind of trying, uh, trying to counter strike more. Than anything but um with the scenario of you know basically grappler versus striker i got to be first um if i let him close the space and, and trap me against the cage or, or in the corner you know that's that's his benefit so um definitely forward motion and um a lot of pressure i mentioned at the beginning of our conversation here the nickname the boogeyman uh, what is, what is the origin of this nickname oh man i'm, I'm just the guy that scares a lot of people um, you know, it was given to me by, by the fans, uh, so it, it kind of stuck. Um, that's what they want to call me. That's what it is. Uh, I try to live up to it and keep people fearful. Now, do you do you truly like the nickname? Because it almost sounds like you're like, eh. I like it. Um, you know, it was just one of those situations that I didn't want to pick my own name. So... Um, so I got a lot of names tossed at me and, and one finally stuck. So we kind of just went with it and, you know, here I am today. You know, you, I mean, you mentioned the nickname, people might hear that. Maybe they get perceptions, whatnot. I mean, what, what would be the perception that people would have of you? And then they meet you and they kind of realize like, no, man, that I, I what I thought of, of Rakeem is totally different. Um, I guess people would think I'm, I'm, you know, I'm more scary uh, or, or whatnot and intense. Uh, I'm a fun person. I, I'm, you know, I like to crack jokes. I like to talk a lot of trash. Uh, so, you know, hanging with King Mo, I'll definitely give him his, his run for his money. You know, that's how our conversation started. Hey, what's up? Straight to trash talk. So, <laughs> uh, you know, I just like to have fun with it. I enjoy the sport uh, and the nickname it fits me as far as in the cage, but outside of the cage, I'm a fun person. It, it seems like it, I, what uh, all fighters kind of say this of like, you know, people just think I'm this mean person. Like I'm this nice guy. I'm easygoing guy. I mean, is it almost like for you? It's when you step inside that cage or that ring, it, it's a, it's a flip that switches and you go from, you know, Rakeem, the guy to Rakeem, the fire. And they're just, it's, 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 it's a very different personality. Yeah, definitely. You got you got to have you know you got to have your, your separation um, when it comes down to this because you know um, when you get in the cage, you kind of 
put everything in the back of your mind and, and prepare for destruction. So, um, you know, I'm in a seek and destroy, um, and we could be friends after. And anyone that follows you on your Instagram will, will know you, you do a lot of shout outs to uh, the people that support you. So uh, let everyone know who the companies that, that are support you and where everybody can follow you out on social media. Um, you can find me uh, on Instagram, uh, Rock Him the Boogeyman Cleveland. Uh, Facebook, Rock Him the Boogeyman Cleveland. Uh, my Twitter handle is uh, Team Rock Him 58. And uh, I just want to give a shout out to uh, Dakota Fight Gear, Grishka Chiropractic, Turp House. Um, Quest Nutrition, Impact Mouth Guards, uh, Skylar Orthopedics, uh, G Fuel uh, Energy Supplements, um, Doc's Lounge back in Iowa. Um, you know, if I'm forgetting anyone, I'm sorry, but you know, I just want to thank everyone for the support and uh, all the fans, my family, and you know, look for a good show. Rakeem, man, as always, I appreciate time and uh, look forward to seeing the fight here on October 13th, man. Yes, sir. Thank you.